welcome to this button LED circuit. So basically, what we're going to do is use one of these push buttons to trigger uh, different light patterns in an LED panel. So we're going to build the same LED panel we built in the last circuit, except we're going to introduce an input into the circuit. So the input is going to be this button. And the way that the Arduino is going to read it is through one of these pins. We're going to designate it as an input. And if it reads a voltage that's above a certain threshold, I think it's about above 3 volts, then um, the button is going to be high. And we can write an if function and then we can roll out um, some LED patterns. So if, in order to get the voltage to the button, we're going to have to put the 5 volt rail on the far side. And since we're going to have the LED panel in as well, we're going to put the G and D on the same end of things. So, let's, we get in, wait, plus, there we go, we get some power into the button, and we put that, I don't know, into 7, 6, 5, 4. Okay, so now when I push the button, pin 4 is going to be high. And there's a little uh, wrinkle to this whole thing that we should probably take care of immediately. Um, this button may accidentally be tripped to be high. Uh, this is going to be the case because some of the current can leak through. And the way we avoid that is we take a large resistor. This one's 15K. And we plug it into the ground and into the uh, uh, other leg of the button. So... When the button isn't pushed, it's essentially connected to the ground through a large resistor. But when the button is pushed, this is going to be tripped off as high. So all we have to do now is um, put in four LEDs and connect them to four um, Arduino pins. And we're going to use 6, 8, 10, and 12. So I'm going to have them like relatively close to each other. Short leg, as always, in the blue rail, long leg in the breadboard. For resistors, these are 330 ohm. Six, eight, ten, and we just need one more. Skip one. Come on. Twelve. All right. There it is. Time to try out our program. All right. So let's get this started. We're going to start by introducing a brand new concept, and it's called variables. Basically, what I'm going to do is, instead of using um, number 6, or pin 6, to refer to the pin 6, which is my first LED, I'm just going to give it a name. And I'm going to do that by declaring it as an integer. So, int LED 1 equals 6. So, this is going to tell the computer from here on in, inside the setup, or the loop, I will be able to type in LED1 instead of the number 6. Now this is not really going to make my life um, that much easier in a short program, but as we get into bigger programs it's really going to become a lot more intuitive. And it helps you read the code a bit more like English, especially if you don't know exactly what's going on in the circuit. So that said, we got to declare our four LEDs as outputs and um, our button as an input. So how are we going to do that? We're going to say pin mode. And now we can say LED1 as output. Semicolon, and we can copy all of this for the first four LEDs. Two, three, four. And we have ourselves a button. Now, I haven't um, created a variable for the button. Now, the pins are 6, 8, 
10 and 12. And our button is in pin 4. All right. So we can basically say int button equals 4. Bingo. And here we can say button, comma, input. So we are set up, we're ready to get into the loop. And now we're going to introduce your second new concept. It is the if function. So if basically is, it's like in English, you know, if, if this is the case, then I'm going to do such and such. So if, and then we're going to digital read this time. So we've been digital writing to turn LEDs on. We're going to digital read the button. So we're going to check the state of the button. And if the state is high, then we're going to do whatever it is that we put in between these two curly brackets. And what we could put is maybe we can turn all the LEDs on if the button is pushed, and then they're going to stay on forever. But let's have a look. Digital right. LED one. And two, three, four. All right, so let's see if we have. Ah, oh, we need to save that. Saved it is. All right, it's compiled. We made no errors. And now we've uploaded it. So if I push this, all the four LEDs come on. Fantastic. And they're going to stay on forever. But we can fix that. And have them go off. If I say low. Oh my god, that's a mess. Low. Low. So, in theory at least, what this should introduce is a situation where the button, when pressed, the LED is gone, otherwise they're off. And what we could do is perhaps add a delay here. So every time the button is pressed, the, the LEDs stay on for two seconds. That's a variation, maybe 2,000. One, two, off. So what we could do is a great variety of things. Maybe we can have it so that there is like a cascade, you know, we turn um, each LED on and off with a specific delay. And if I put C here, delay 200, LED one high, LED one low. So what I'm going for here is some kind of an effect where they, you know, turn on and off one by one. Uh. I think there's a delay of 2000 somewhere, yeah. So... As you can see, you can do a great deal with this code. What I would do is I would go to the previous program and copy and paste whatever LED patterns you had within this if function. Remember, it has to be in between these two brackets. You can also get creative. You can add a buzzer in there. You might want to add a second button. And you could even put 
a nested if function, an if inside the if, if for the first button, if for the second button. This is a, a fantastic spot to start doing some of your own experimentation and writing your own code. So that's what I'm going to leave you with. Your turn to build an experiment.